Hey, I'm Dukes on Twitch. If you want to support the channel and greensunsinit.com, you can find my Patreon, merch store, and single store where you can buy singles through TCG Player or Card Hoarder in the video description. If you want to get in contact, you can also find all that info in the description below for things like donation deck lists or just wanting to reach out. All right, let's get right into it. Hey team, welcome back to Dukes on Twitch. Back today with Bant. Maverick, thanks to that Maverick Joe who has donated a deck list, and I actually wanted to see how Bant fared in the in the current meta game. So I'm actually just going to do this as kind of a warm up, uh, and then of course uh, get on to uh, Joe's donation, which will be a recording and a uh, a stream, which would be pretty cool. First up, pretty tough time for Bant in general. Uh, Pyroclasm, sorry, Pyroblast has been seen a lot of play, especially main deck. So the appeal for blue in Maverick is definitely lingering, but uh, I think there's something here with Bant. Uh, I think it's a really cool color combination. It's obviously the best color combination for Noble Hierarch, as it is all the colors that she makes. Uh, and he gets pretty cool cards in blue. This version, we're playing two Hull Breacher in the main deck. Uh, we're getting an Uro, which is nice. We have two blue Elemental Blasts in the sideboard which is quite nice for things like Expressive Iteration, uh, Dreadhorde, sorry, DRC, uh, and also any sort of sweeper effects like uh, End the Festivities. And then also Lagrella, which is a pretty interesting card. She is a three drop for Bant, legendary creature, two, three. And when she enters the battlefield, exile any number of other target creatures controlled by different players until she leaves the battlefield. Uh, when an exiled card enters the battlefield under your control this way, put two plus one plus one counters on it. So uh, you get to exile one of your opponent's cards or creatures, and then if you want, you can exile one of your own as well. And then when uh, Lagrella leaves the field, you can then bring your card back and yours gets two plus one plus one counters on it, which is pretty cool. Uh, it has some nice uh, interaction with sort of ETB cards, like Knight of Autumn, uh, potentially um, Palace. JLA if you're playing that in a band shell, which is kind of cool. Uh, so pretty interesting to see how this goes. I did find in a few of the matches that I just played previously, uh, she was a little bit awkward by exiling a big creature of theirs and then not knowing when you can attack. Because if you attack with, say, this and a 4-4 knight and you've exiled a 4-5 goif, uh, if they have removal, it's going to work out pretty hard. So I've actually shifted the deck towards having Sylvan Safekeeper in the deck, which I really like over Mother Vroon's currently because of how I'm testing out the slots in Maverick it gives me a lot more place uh places in the main deck instead of having say three to four mother runes I've got the one safekeeper which I can find through my four green suns uh and then yeah still allows me to have a number of kind of tutor targets in here which is cool uh the other card that's actually impressed me so far is a Johnny sleeper agent so this is a four mana walker but you can get it down on turn two thanks to mana acceleration, and also the ability to pay for one of its mana costs through Phyrexian mana. And this is actually quite relevant because it means it's a, a, a three mana walker, or at least a, a walker you can cast for three mana, but it can only be prismatic endinged for four, which is pretty huge. So straight away it comes down with four counters. Uh, you can plus one up to five to reveal the top card of your library. If it's a creature or planeswalker card, you can put it into your hand. Otherwise you may put it on the bottom, which is great. If you're looking for land, keep it there. Looking for removal, keep it there. Uh, the Neg 3, which keeps a journey around, is distribute three plus one plus one counters among up to three target creatures, uh, which is pretty cool. They gain Vigilance until end of turn. And then Neg 6, which is just two tick ups away, so three turns after. Uh, whenever you cast, and that's cast, uh, a creature or planeswalker spell, your opponent gets two poison counters, which is a uh, pretty... Pretty cool. I would say we're not really playing it for the Neg 6, but the plus one and the Neg 3 are quite nice. Uh, and I really like the Neg 3 keeps the Ajani around as well. That's pretty cool. Hey Fex, a big thank you for the Prime with sub. A huge thank you. Um, that's about it. We had some meddling mages in the board, but I actually cut the meddling mages for Gadok Teague because I think in the matchups where you want meddling mage, you kind of want Gadok Teague because Gadok Teague is a meddling mage for things like Supreme Verdict, Terminus, Jace, Engineered Explosives, Prismatic Ending. It's a meddling mage for uh, Ad Nauseam, uh, Past in Flames, Tendrils, Empty the Warrants, Massacre. So uh, it's also findable through, or tutorable, through Green Suns again. So instead of playing non-green cards in Meddling Mage, 
The Ghetto T is quite nice because with Prismatic in ending in the format, it is quite hard to really name something that's going to have a good effect. There are still some decks like potentially Show and Tell or Doomsday. Uh, if you really expect them, then Meddling Mage can be really strong. But uh, a little bit why Sanctum Prelate's fallen out of favor is that a lot of things have changed with Prismatic ending in the format. It just gives a lot of decks a lot of outs to certain bears like Meddling Mage. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead with Teague and see how that goes. Um, that is pretty much it. Yeah, so the deck did have four Ice Fangs, um, but only the three basics. And I find just I found just during testing, it was a little bit hard to aggressively go for the basics to get Death Touch online. Um, and then also be able to cast my other spells. Um, like if you have the three basics, it's going to be quite hard to double spell at some points. Um, so... The Ice Fang, just as a one of is kind of nice. Uh, it is, or could potentially be a pretty nice blocker for us. It does draw a card, which is cool. It pitches to the Endurance. Um, so pretty keen to see how it performs. And I think I will as well just keep an eye out on uh, different moments in the matches when I kind of felt like I wanted to have an Ice Fang, because um, that's pretty important. I think that Ice Fang has nice, nice value. Uh, it draws straight away, which is great. So if your opponent does try to exile it or remove it, we've already gained a card off it. So that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, keen to see how this goes. But we are playing a Legacy League with Joe Bant. Play points, nice. I hope you are all doing well. Hope some of you got off to the Legacy Pit Open, which happened over the weekend. Very, very cool. I think we all know which... Uh, deck one, no spoilers. Yeah, OGC, I know that our Achilles, before he's taken some time off, uh, was very keen of Nissa Stewart of Elements. Um, I actually picked some up as well because I do want to test them out as well and see how they perform. Uh, this ends pretty good. I would call this kind of a, a six because the, the oof could just be turned off, but, um, yeah, I think here I'm pretty happy just to green suns out, uh, for... Dried Arbor off a Savannah. Um, that turns on Wasteland as a pretty nice turn two with Thalia. Um, and also we can just Savannah Green Suns for Dried Arbor, and then we can play Thalia with Caracas up, which is kind of cool. Hey Echo, thank you very much. Whew. All right. There is a, a world where we could keep the Green Suns and not have a turn one play because our mana is quite, quite good, but... I think there's a lot of upsides to uh to green sunning here. Yeah, Lagrella is I think she's got a lot to prove. But could potentially be pretty interesting. I mean she takes counters off the Merc Tide, which is kinda cool. Like it exiles a big Merc Tide and when it comes back, if they remove it most likely, then it's just a 3-3, which is kinda sweet. Um exiling your own stuff can be pretty cool, especially if you're trying to play around um uh, like a Supreme Verdict effect somewhat. Not too sure what our opponent is on. I feel like we've played against Philo before. Yeah, very true Echo. And the big reason why I wanted to... Thoughtseize, okay. Uh, why I wanted to play Sylvan Safekeeper. Because you can protect it with Sylvan Safekeeper, which is quite nice. Taking the bomb's kind of nice because it means we could just draw into a second one. And there's the Wasteland, so that's actually pretty nice as well. Um, like Thali into Wasteland was exactly what we were going for, so... Uh, I think here we're just going to take them out and then play the, uh, the Oof. She's a nice Krakus combo with the Ice Fangs. That's actually very true, yeah, it comes back as a 3-3 and, and you get to draw an extra card. That's pretty cool. Underground Sea Thoughtseize makes me think this is going to be Doomsday, but there is a world where it could be like a blue-black uh, reanimator deck. That Maverick Joe, very cool to see you. I hope you got my email as well. Um, this is kind of just like a, a tester to run through. I wanted to give you like a, a bit of an insight into, I guess, how Bant uh, would look like 
running through a league in paper. Um, and then maybe we can like talk about the deck before we go into the actual leagues of the nation. More than happy for that. Yeah, that's very true. And to be fair, like in this version, I did drop the Knight of Autumn just to lower the curve. Uh, and uh, I actually play Outland Liberator in the board, but I, I think that's that's definitely worthy, especially in this current metagame, to have that effect. So I think we'll we'll go back to to Knight of Autumn for sure. I think the big things I want to take away from this league include. Um, how many times is Safekeeper relevant? Like, how many times do we actually want the protection? Um, how many times did we kind of want to have an Ice Fang more than just once? Uh, and maybe even, like, is the Green Suns package enough that we don't need the Prismatic Endings as kind of flexible removal? Is it better to, like, maybe go further into the, the Green Suns package? Oh, okay. Speaking of, uh, there's no great drops here. So I'm pretty happy just to hold this for one more turn. Um, they chose to not shuffle with their Honda. Just in case it is Reanimator, I'll play the Caracas. And then next turn we can Green Suns for potentially something a little bit more impactful, like Knight of the Reliquary. Island, Island. Okay. Interesting. This, also, this could also be like a Thought Lash deck that's playing black. Thought Lash would be pretty brutal. If I green suns for three, what am I green sunning for? It's probably Knight, because at least Knight turns on Canopy if I really need to start drawing cards. It's also quite a big creature as well, so... I don't mind that. I could play this, but I might... I want to keep this for a blue source. But this deck seems unfair. Uh, oh, okay. We're actually pretty close to Uro as well. We do need an, another color, but I think just getting another threat on the board is better. Hey, Elo, you are more than welcome. A big thank you to you for the, uh, for the sub. That means a lot. Okay. Wow. Okay, so there are a blue deck. We saw Thought Seize. Very interesting. Chat, what do you think? If you saw these cards and the mana base, what would you think? Would you think Doomsday? Hmm. Budget Doomsday, maybe Blue Black Show and Tell. Hmm. I think I definitely like the Endurance. That's an easy one. I think the Deafening Silences and potentially the Carpet is also quite nice. Um. I think like the Ice Fang, the Uro, probably the Prismatics um, are pretty easy cuts. The Carpets are interesting. They are just like another turn one play. I could see like Blast Zone coming out. Maybe Ninjas? Interesting. Ninjas with Thought Seize. I'll keep the swords as a just in case. I think the Oof has merit. It definitely seemed like a Lotus Petal style deck, so I think the Oof is worth it. The Ramanap can probably come out, because uh, I assume they just keep going with basics. The carpets seem fine. The Teague's definitely interesting. Doesn't really hurt us other than Green Sun, so I think Teague probably does a little bit more than um, something like the Questing Beast. I don't mind this. I could also go down on a uh, a Noble Hierarch because of the carpets and maybe just keep quest Questing Beast back in. Beast is probably one of our 
better threats through a doomsday just because it can attack as soon as it comes down. But I could definitely see with a little bit more information dropping it. Hmm. Probably a mulligan for me. I think against this sort of deck, I want a mulligan pretty aggressively towards Deafening Silence uh, or an Endurance Hand if it is going to be Reanimator. Okay, this is actually perfect because we got both Deafening Silence and Endurance. So, um, also have the Oof. I think here it's just going to be the Swords to Plow Shares. Because um, I think we're definitely going Green Sun's turn one off Savannah instead of Green Sunning for Dried Upper. So then turn two Oof. And then we have Green Sun's and Endurance to Pitch. Joe, that's the that's pretty true. Uh, Outland Liberator is kind of a three drop because I'm probably not going to play it out when I don't have mana up for it. So it's actually a really good point. All right. Opponent went to five and they're going to turn one Brainstorm. Turn one Brainstorm always makes me think that they're a combo deck that's very close to going off on the same turn. Hey, Vigo, a huge thank you for the Prime sub. Too kind. I hope you're doing well. Hope you had a nice weekend. Now I feel a little bit safe with this Deafening Silence in play. Especially if my opponent takes the turn to play something like a Lotus Petal out. Or, or an LED. There we go. Kind of lines up pretty perfectly. Wasteland's nice. I don't want to show it just yet, so I'm just going to go ahead with the Trop and play this Oof before they can make use of this LED. Okay, well, we take those ones for sure. I would have loved to have known what it was because... I th Yeah, I think Doomsday plays Double Island. I assume it plays Double Island for like a pile with Oracle if you want to play around Wasteland. And it does play LED. I don't think Tess or Ant play Double Island, so I would take them off that. Reanimator probably doesn't play uh, LED either, so probably probably Doomsday. But hey, deck is crushing it. Let's uh, let's stop the count. Let's close up the stream. That's it. Thanks for coming and watching. This has been Bant Maverick. <laughs>。Yeah, big shout out to uh, Ramar who played at the Legacy Pit and did very well with Reanimator. I know there's another player who uh, was playing Reanimator. There's actually a few that did quite well, but I know Ramar did really well day one at least. So pretty cool. Ah, <laughs> hey Vig. Nice. Yeah, that was pretty sweet. Um, I believe it was, my opponent was tapped out uh, and they had one land that could untap. I think it was a Ottawara potentially and we top decked the choke and we got to take out four lands. Which is pretty huge. Pretty, pretty nice. Um, I believe they use a prismatic ending the turn before on a grist and then we untapped and drew the choke because it's just another big play. So that was, uh, that was pretty sweet. Um, I think this hand is quite nice. We get to once for something like a Thalia to keep us in check in the early game. Uh, and then we have like Questing Beast to, to close this out. We have Endurance for Graveyard Hate, so pretty nice. Also just Mana on point is really, really cool. Choke, choke draw is the, uh, is the best draw. Unfortunately, you can't. I have seen some players play Choke in Bant Maverick when they have a build with like one Trop. We are going to once first. Just because I'm not sure what we're up against, I kind of just want to take whatever we can. Um, Knight's actually pretty nice here. Knight can find Wasteland. I don't really want another land, so I think Knight's fine. And I think that Misty into Savannah into Noble just gives away what we're on anyway. There is a world here where I just want to get a forest because a forest into Noble means if the Noble gets taken out, then we can actually cast our three drops without getting wastelanded in the middle. So just doing this because the hand kind of relies on getting to three mana pretty quickly. Plus 
plains. Ooh. At least if they have... Ooh, Esper Sentinel. Okay. Thankfully, this is non-creature spell. Um, so here, I'm pretty happy to go and get a Savannah and just get Knight online ASAP. Yeah, I'm going to assume this is Hammer as well. Uh, it could be like Black White Humans. Could be like an interesting version of DNT or like Soldier Stompy, but typically Soldier Stompy has uh, Chalice as their kind of term on play, so I think Hammer is a pretty good take. Stoneforge is fine. Hey, Whiskey. Yeah, definitely a tough one for, for Nia Depths. Like, I know Mapson didn't have a, a great tournament, but uh, I think that says more about just uh, the variety and variance of Magic more than the actual player. Because um, as we know, Mapson is a pretty incredible player. Um, but yeah, like I think going into Legacy Pit, if you wanted to be at the top tables, you, you should have definitely been ready for Nia Depths. So for a lot of decks to have hate for the, for the archetype definitely makes sense. Um, d and did pretty well. Uh, I know David Lance went really well, uh, making top eight, I believe, and then going down to Blue Red Delva, um, which is really cool to see him on camera as well. Plays really cleanly, knows what he wants to do. This is an interesting turn. The question is, do I care about the Batter Skull? I could just get in with Questing Beast, which gets above the Batter Skull, to be fair. I actually don't mind that. Like, Questing Beast attack with both creatures, potentially, for eight. I could hold up Sword if I really wanted to. Um, I guess we could also Sword the Stoneforge and then go and get Cradle for Questing Beast. That's pretty interesting. A lot of little options here. The question is that uh, Swords here is a pretty big resource, so I can either take them off Batterskull, or I could keep it for like some of their, their insane hammer draws. But I think here it is going to be... Uh, swords cost two, of course. Hmm. I think I'm actually happy just to play Blast Zone and just play Questing Beast, and then hold up Sword. Hmm. No, I... <sighs> hmm. Uh, I've seen Hammer and Batterskull before. But... I actually am going to hold the sword for now. I don't see Batterskull as that big of an issue. It's also a 60 card deck, so that does make me think it isn't. Um, Death and Taxes. Okay, so they have Caracas for the Questing Beast. Skyclave. What does Skyclave do? Well, don't go after the Questing Beast. They have to go after the Knight here. If they go after the Questing Beast, we can get our own Caracas and Caracas it back. So they have to go for the Knight. But then we follow up by Wasteland on Caracas and then also Swords. Okay, that makes sense. Ooh, another Swords is brutal. Because now we have one in case they have land Flick Wisp. The island is a little bit awkward here, because it means we can't double spell, but... Um, I'm pretty happy to have it and then take out this Stone Forge right now. Uh, which we can pay for as well. So now I, I really hope their line is land Flicker Wisp. Another Skyclave. Okay. Not the worst. Ooh, 
Oh, do they attack? Do they attack? We've already used one sword. Oh, they do! Oof. That is a little bit of greed. That is, it, it's tough. Oh, yeah, this is fine. This is fine. Because now we get a 4-4 four, four and a 3-3. Three, three. Pretty huge. I think here I'm just going to hold up Endurance and also Once. I could try to find a Wasteland or a Thalia or another 2-drop, but I think Endurance is just so good here. I don't believe you can do that because it's still ETBs. Um, and then I, I believe what happens there if I uh, exile the Skyclave with the trigger on the stack is that I don't get anything because when it leaves, I get an XX illusion equal to zero or I just get nothing. I think that's how it works. Definitely a tough spot for them. Because we have Blastwind to take out the Sentinel if need be. We have End Step Endurance. Yeah, it's a little bit different because of it being in two different paragraphs. I'm also going to target myself here because I do want to put these swords back into the deck. And currently, like, a, a big knight isn't really a, a priority for me, so the lands going back in the deck isn't that, isn't that big of a deal. If you remove the Skyclay before it removes the card, nothing happens at all. You keep your thing. Oh, interesting. Okay. Do they use port here? They don't. What could they have? To be fair, like, this is lethal, even if they only block once, so... I think I'd rather just do as much as I can before I have to do anything. Pretty tough spot for them. Okay. Hey, Panda. Two kinds. And a big thank you, Panda, for all the times you've lent me Misk and Boo so far this year. I very much appreciate it. I think just getting like a, a, a Thalia down here would be perfect. Because it's, it's exactly what I want in terms of just having another threat. Oh, they do have... Oh, it also keeps the Batter Skull off the field. Which is very relevant as well. Because we put them to 7 if in, even if we swords it. Okay, they go for Sash. And another Stoneforge, okay. Oh, really? Risk Whiskey, are there um, deck lists out? I think it was done through MTG Melee, so I assume so. Uh, this is actually quite nice because they can block both threes and take two, but we can just Prismatic Ending one. Ah, uh, is out? Perfect. Thanks, Ox. Too kind. Yeah, because what I like to do is get all the, all the lists together and then do a bit of a comparison to see, like, what is the most played cards. Okay, perfect. So good, because I think if you put in depths, no. Nope. Um, oh, it should. I wonder why not. Bob. 
but yeah, very, very cool. Nice to see. Uh, ye, I think so. Um, uh, oh, Tony Scaponi came fourth? Hell yeah, Tony. None in the top 25. So Jordan Lidsky did best with Silencia Depths, which is nice to see. Main deck Liberator. Just one library. No Minsk. Oh, two Minsk. Okay. Two Minsk main deck. Three Minsk total. Three Blast. Path. Prismatic Ending. Nice. I like that list. All right. We're up against DNT. So I like taking out these. Probably the hulls. I like the Ajani's. I like the forces. I like the outland. I like the path. Um, endurance isn't great, but just being a 3-4 body is quite nice. Especially against Flickwisp. It's definitely going to be these. Potentially just an Endurance. I don't mind Questing Beast because it means that if a mum does come down and gets online, we can turn her off in some regard. So I think that's a pretty nice switcher up. I don't mind this hand. Uh, like... Getting my mana online against DNT is exactly what I want to do. And having turn one removal is pretty sweet. So even though it's quite mana heavy, I'm pretty happy to keep it. Okay. I think because I drew another land here, I'm actually happy to go for Savannah. Because if they want to spend their turn wastelanding me instead of playing something like a Stoneforge, I'm pretty happy for that. We do have Blast Zone as well as an out to Mum, but we don't have great ways for that. And this is great. Like, I really don't care about this port. Like, I, I'm, I'd much rather not see an actual threat from them. Now I just want to draw into threats. Uh, not a threat, but still not the worst. Uh... So now's an interesting one. I can either try to flood the board with green sources or get the forest. I think I'd rather just get double savannah and just try to flood the board with uh, wasteland and port targets. But yeah, Lagrella is definitely an interesting one against them. Especially with their own Krakus as well. Yeah, Stoneforge. Okay. They go for Lion Sash. Interesting. That makes me think they have... Uh... Kaldra in hand. Do they have a third land? I wonder if they're thinking about Wasteland, and if they Wasteland me, then if we Wasteland back, they might be stuck on one mana. Okay. Let's once first. Outland Liberator is pretty nice. It's probably the best card here. Don't mind Liberator. I don't mind Cradle into Noble Attack for two. I don't want to play the Outland Liberator out until we actually have a target and mana up. I did see a Wasteland there though, so Wasteland's definitely an option. Maybe that was the go. Hmm, especially if they're missing mana now. Like we have multiple ways to find Outland Liberator at sorcery speed, but Wasteland not so much. Alright. 
Uh, I don't want to attack into a batter skull. I guess I could play Liberator and then attack. It's like Dried Arbor. Play Liberator. Holding up like Sword Mana. And then we can attack for two. Nothing. This is probably where like a Jani shines as well, just being able to turn some of our dorks into real threats. Oh, they're gonna solitude. Interesting to get rid of the Atlan Liberator. Uh nothing we can do here, so that's fine. What did they exile for that? Sash? No. Mum. Okay. Okay. Yeah, maybe the Wasteland was the play. Sylvan Library would be cool. Gonna have to cradle, yeah. Mm. Not great. No great attacks either due to the batter skull. Kind of hard cast, hard cast force of vigor coming up, which is nice. This song is kind of putting me to sleep, so I'm going <laughs> to push it. Alright, I'm just going to take this. Wow, still at two mana. So I feel like right now is just when we need to have like some real good threat. Especially while they're down on mana, but we just can't get there. Ah, oh, there we go. That's a good start. I could attack with the Collector Oof here and see if they want to block. I actually don't mind that. If they had Jude, they would have definitely held up Stoneforge over two turns. They also got rid of the line sash to solitude, so that's quite nice. There could be a world where they're solitude again here because they're already at, you know, six cards. They're getting close to having to discard if they don't hit lands. Hmm. Okay. Um, I will fetch in response just to get that extra. I guess get the free fetch. Oh, they took out the oof. Huh. Okay. They took out the oof. But they got rid of the sash. If they attacked, I'd probably think about something like a relic post-combat, uh, or potentially... Ah, oh, vile, okay. 
Going the long way, I see. All right, now we're getting somewhere. Um, that probably makes me happier to go for Questing Beast here. We've dealt with the Atlan Liberator. I could actually go for the, um, uh, Legretta? Loretta? I actually think that's pretty good here because it can hit the Batiscal token. And then I can attack with the Dryad Arbor and then Wasteland them. Loretta the Magpie? Surely not. Oh, it is. What? <laughs> I actually did not think it was uh, a Magpie. It's pretty funny. Alright. All right, second planes. Hey D5, welcome. Hope you're doing well as well. Hope you had a nice weekend. Currently in game two against DNT. Okay, Jude is not too bad because what we can do is block with Dried Arbor on an equipped creature and then sack it to the knight before damage. Or just draw something like Uro. Um. All right, let's start with attacks. Probably Lagrella. I think I, I wouldn't say Maverick is better positioned. I think that having a, a, an I win button in Dark Depths is just so strong. But it's, um, it's really tough because I feel like a lot of players who would go to a competitive event like the Legacy Pit would generally be skewed towards Green White Depths than Maverick. Um, and I think the one reason for that is, is that Maverick has like a really strong plan. Like you're making a 2020 and then with things like Crop Rotation and Endurance and Green Suns, you can pivot to interact with your opponent pretty quickly with things like Bajuka Bog or um, other means. But Maverick is more proactive in getting creatures on board and kind of thinking about what your opponent is going to do the next turn. So you can get like a, a Gadok Teague down before Natural Order comes into play. Or, you know, getting Collector Oof down before your Painter or 8 cast opponent can kind of go wide with a lot of different things off Artifact Lands and Artifact Mana. So that's always pretty tough. Because if you get that wrong and they do something else, then it's pretty brutal. But I think Depths is still pretty strong. And I think that uh, Minsk has only made it better against some of its weaker starts. All right, let's start with Uro. Hmm. Play the Tundra. I think the only reason that it might have not have done as well um, is due to uh, people just being ready for it. Uh, one sword, windswept, snow, this. Oh, prismatic ending? Wow. Um, I think I actually just get rid of the Jitte here. Oh, I don't have white mana? Oh, that's a tough one. I guess I do through the night, but I also have the dried arbor, so... I think we'll just pass. Yeah. We're definitely in a great position. I mean, my opponent has just stumbled on mana the whole time. Yeah, I don't think uh, the outcome of one event like that is going to stall the deck based on all its... Uh, sort of what it's done over the last few few years. few, or At least few months, even. Okay. Hey, 
Hey John, thanks for the subscription. Solitude Pitch Palace Jailer. What are they going to target? Oh no. Opponent. Caracas. Now that is value. Oh, if we if we draw green suns here, we have the win. I reckon we have the win if we draw green suns here. Because we can uh Wasteland. Still pretty good. I guess we could Uro into it. Green Suns. How do I want to do this? Alright, start with Uro. Ramen up. Um, Ramen up is pretty free here. Get back a wasteland. Get this. Turn this. Play this. Hit. Um. I think we actually hit Stoneforge here and then Prismatic ending the recruiter. It's not two, but like, I'm just trying to think if they have a, uh, a two drop for the Jide. I could keep up the Dried Arbor and then sack it to Knight before damage. Um, I could also just take out the Vile here and then hold up Dried Arbor with Knight with no need to attack. We're just in such a good spot that I, I, I'm trying to think of where do we lose the game. And I think it starts potentially with them having an out for uh, with Jide. And I guess I kind of know about that if they put something in in response, so I might as well just take out. To be fair, I might just take out the Jide. That actually makes a lot more sense. I'm getting for eight. And then potentially that's lethal next turn if we go wide with everything. Two, four, five, one off. A lot of different decisions I could have made there. Like even getting back the Uro is another one. There's green suns. Okay. Uh, I believe what we can do here is green suns. For one, two, three, for Kletuf. Oh, is that in exile? It is. Um, I think honestly, we just go for questing beast here. I only need to do it for four, but I 
think we're okay with attacking with... Oh, actually, I can... I could just attack with the Questing Beast unless they have specifically Ice, uh, Flicker Wisp or Skyclave Apparition. We do have the Caracas for it, but... I kind of like just sending in the team and seeing what happens. They have two cards. Tough one for sure. Skyclave. We will save this. They lose the recruiter. They take five and go to one. And then we can just replay either Questing Beast or Uro. Don't mind replaying Uro here. We're now at a stage where the knight doesn't have to be a big threat, so. And obviously drawing cards is super cool. Pretty good. I could wait, but I think we're just in such a good position that I don't have to swords the Skyclave here. I think there's only one card that gets him out of it, and it's like a uh, a Peacekeeper, but we have the swords for it. Yeah, it's a really tough time for them. Like, they, they stumbled on mana for a long time there. Really tough. Well, the deck so far has been pretty nice, but... <laughs> the games have been interesting. Uh, and I know I use the word interesting a lot on stream. But here we are. All right, up against Ferticus. And now this is a, a hand that's uh, really reliant on this once upon a time and a draw step, but I'm pretty happy for that. I'm pretty happy to see where this goes because otherwise it, it's a pretty nice hand. Ooh, Ancient Tomb. Pedal? Show and tell? No. Blood Sun. Okay, let's... We don't have to respond to that. Does turn off the wasteland, which is a little bit tough. Turns off fetch lands as well. All right. Oh no. Okay, I guess we go for Uro. Uh, yeah, I think we go for Uro here. I think it's probably just going to be fodder for the endurance, but. Sometimes it doesn't work out, and that's fine. Don't chalice me, bruh. Oof. Big yikes. At least with a land off the top, we do have... Ooh. Access to Prismatic Ending? Wait, 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 wait. Oh, could I have Prismatic Ending just with that two mana? I don't actually need the color. I think I could have. Oh, okay. I didn't expect sneak attack. I think this works. That's why it's called sneak attack. <laughs> yes, love it. 
Uh, is there a reason why Maverick is not evolving into Yorion like DNT, especially with the tutor density you can have access to? I think the big thing is that DNT doesn't have the ETB effects uh, like we see with um, with DNT. But I have actually we played a we played a league with Yorion uh, Mav the other day, and it did surprisingly well. We played Abzan, uh, and the only loss was to. Uh, Rainbow Depths, and we actually we we misplayed. I don't I don't want to be that guy who's like, oh, we we won, but we didn't really win. But it was it was it was a win in my books. Uh, and the deck was sweet. So like with Yorion, you have some ETB effects like these, um, and then you also just get get to fit your deck with a bunch of like plate pl uh, planes. Blah, 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 speak <laughs> a bunch of play sets of cards, which is nice. So you still get a lot of consistency across the deck. Uh, this version was kind of playing a Field of the Dead finisher with Primetime and, and Titania. And of course, with Titania and Safekeeper, you kind of have an auto win as well, because with Titania in play, you can just sack your lands and step and attack back. Uh, yeah, really low white count with the Solitudes. Uh, to be fair, we do play a fair amount of Mana Accelerant. So you do just get to a high number of... Um, you get to be able to just hard cast them a lot of the time, but I can definitely see that, yeah, maybe there should be a, a little bit more uh, white cards in here. I'm actually not sure of the math on it and how many white cards you should have. I would assume maybe 20 is probably the, the number, but let's quickly look at this. Um, so we saw Chalice, we saw Sneak, we want the blue bar blasts, we probably want the path for this one, uh, we want the Outland Liberator, and we probably want the Deafening Silences. Um... Hull Breaches I can see coming out. Remanap is just a little bit slow, especially with Blood Sun as well. Uh, Lagria is pretty cool. Uro is pretty slow. Ice Fang is pretty slow. Swords are still great. Collect Oof is fine. Thalia's Blast Zone can probably come out here. Um, probably some number of Endurance. I don't mind library because we can kind of be a little bit aggressive with it. That's true, you can also buy Yorion, which is nice. Um, I don't mind Prismatics because they deal with forces, but they are otherwise a little bit dead. Beast is nice finishing off. I could see the Endurances just coming out. Not really a card I want. And then potentially Safekeeper. Which Maverick build do you think is best positioned against Blue Red Delver? Uh, I think Punishing Mav has a good time because you have the blast effects. I also think just Green White is quite nice because you get to run the full four basics of both two and two. Uh, this is a tough one because the Atlan Liberator is quite nice here. We also have our mana just online, so I actually like keeping this. A little bit light on interaction, but the Liberator here just does it for me. Yeah, I think you could definitely build a nice Yuri on Mav list with Stoneforge as well. Um, Stoneforge also increases the count for uh, Prismatic for uh, Solitude, so I think that's actually a pretty great card to run. I think I'm happy just to run out the Liberator here and just hope they don't have like some sort of a ritual effect into sneak attack. That's fine. Wasteland's nice. All right, so the question here is, is do I run out Knight or do I hold up Crack Outland Liberator and then hit Chalice? And then hold up Swords and Path. Like it, it has to be what? Like Soul Land, Sneak Attack, Spirit Guide, and also a big threat. Soul Land, Sneak Attack, Red, Threat. That's four out of six. I think we just have to jam the knight here. I could also let this flip and not play the knight, but I think knight's just too good. 
However, if they have something like a Pyroclasm effect, we would lose both Knight and the Atlan Liberator. I'm going to let it flip. I'm going to let it flip and play... Yeah. I think there's a high chance that this, that this deck has brought in some sort of sweeper. And any sweeper that I think they would have brought in, like Kozlik's Return or Pyroclasm, would deal with both creatures there. So I don't think that's worth it. Ah, uh, you bastard. Oh, no, actually, it's actually, this is pretty good for us. Because they put in Sneak. Oh, Chandra? I didn't expect that. All right, well, we trade here. Can we find Questing Beast one time? No. <laughs> um, but we can make a 3-3 Knight, which is pretty nice. I will go for Trop here. Uh, yeah, I'll go for Trop, which allows us to hold up Blue Blast. Holding up the planes because I don't want them to like Blood Moon and then play a creature. Like if I hold up the Savannah. But yeah, I think for uh, all of those in chat asking about, you know, where's Maverick and, and what's kind of happened to it. Um, I think the, the tough thing about Mav right now is that a lot of the players, especially at a competitive level, are kind of seeing... Um, well, that sounds fine. Uh, Nia Depths do so well, and then pivoting towards Nia Depths for competitive events. So you're not really seeing... Um, Mav do its thing because because of that. Come on, Thalia. Oh, you call her. You call her, she comes out. It's exactly what I want. All right, we're taking out the uh, the Chandra here. I uh, There is a world where I should have played around Bolt and played the Wasteland to Wasteland myself to save the night, but because of Blood Sun, we can't do that anyway, so it's not actually an option. And surely they're not running Bolt with the Chalice is still in the deck, so... Now we're looking okay. Um... I'm gonna tap like this. City. Two, four, six mana. Khan? Hmm. Okay. Khan's not too bad. Kind of has to tick up. Oh, it ticks down. Ah, uh, maybe for Tormon's Crypt? But then we can still kill the Khan. Because we'll still have four power in play. Interesting. Well, they get Walking Ballista. That's a big yikes. Can we draw a collector oof? Well, that's pretty good as well. <laughs> Alright. Um two three four. Bang. Attack them. Questing Beast hits Khan. Nice. Now Walking Blister thankfully can't block as well, which is quite nice. Two, four, six, eight. The two life on Ancient Tomb is actually quite relevant here because it would put them down to seven. Ooh, what's this? Two, four, six. Okay. Even if they have, uh, funnily enough, uh, Emrakul isn't a win con here because we have six lands to, to pitch and we have two life to play with. 
Oh, but they could. Oh, they could kill us with the with the uh, walking ballista with the two life left. That's pretty insane. So Emrakul is death. But I think their plan here is to walking ballista and block with it. Ah, oh, they can kill the knight as well. Tough. I don't believe there's anything I can do. Um, I, I am going to untap to see if we can draw into either Green Suns for Outland Liberator. Uh, sorry, for Collector Oof or potentially Force of Vigor for the Blood Sun and catch this Walking Blister off guard. Because if I path now, they can kill both of these. But if I untap and draw into removal, then um, we can path. They try to kill both and then we can do something in response. So I think we actually untap and draw into hate. Uh, close. What do we get? Uh, we can't canopy, right? Because all lands lose all abilities except mana abilities. We do find another knight, though. Which is pretty sweet. I guess we swords. I think swords is actually better here because um, they could gain the life and go to 11. But I think they try to kill these two. And so they gain nothing. So I think Swords is just correct, and then Path is better for a big threat. But Blood Sun here doing a lot of work. Oh, wait! We can still use the knight though. One, two, three, four. Okay. Is there a way for me to get more than one land into the bin even though they have blood sun? I guess we can try. I don't think we can though. I'm trying to think what we have. Um, isn't one of them on Thalia? Oh, one is on Thalia. Oh, okay. So they actually screwed up. Interesting. Um, I guess we just get Dried Arbor, because it can attack. Okay. I think here we hold up Path, we don't play the other Knight. But I could be wrong. I just think at 3 life, I'd rather just have the board and then hope that we can Path. Whatever comes down, or if they have some sort of like weird board wipe, we can just hold the knight. Sneak's fine. So now if they have like a world spine worm, we can just path it before it gets sacked. If it's Emrakul, we don't care, thankfully. Interesting. They're going to hold it up. Come on, Force of Vigor. I haven't wanted to do any more than right now. <laughs> Who doesn't love magic? Who doesn't love magic? Oh my gosh. Some of the calls tonight have been unreal. All right. <laughs> Someone's got to clip that. We're, if, if it is a creature here that we can part to exile as well, uh, we get really rewarded for using the sword on the walking blister. Yeah. Because now we also just have path and then attack. So really, really <laughs> worked out really well. <laughs> uh, hey, Star Fox, welcome. Hope you're well. Um, I'm going to go to the bathroom real quick. I'll be back in a second.
All right. Hopefully, my mic is still good for some reason. With the last stream, when I went to the bathroom and came back, my voice was out of sync with me, but hopefully it's okay. Um. All good? Nice. Think Dext. My only thought is Hellbreacher seeing Grizzle, but I think if they have a Grizzle in play, it's just going to be hard anyway. Pretty happy just running this back. I think if anything over the far past few leagues, it's been uh, me really wanting to have a third Force of Vigor in the sideboard. As nice as it is for a creature deck to have creatures like Antlet Liberator to tutor for, it's the turns like zero to one that I really want the removal, not so much in the mid to late game. Hey Boyd, a huge welcome. Big congrats on the engagement. Obviously long ago, but very, very cool. Um, yeah, we're going to keep this. It's a one lander, but we have the once to find another land. Also having blue elemental blast is just huge. Oh, wow. Okay. I think that incentivizes me to take a wasteland off the once if we find one. We don't. Um, this is actually a tough one because these are both very good cards, especially Gadok Teague. But what I want to do here is probably just hold up Blue Elemental Blast. No, I actually want to tap out for the uh, Deafening Silence here. I think just the extra land is much better than anything else. Like Dried Up, it takes a full turn. It has to just be the mana. Like it just, just keep getting that mana going. Um, and I'm actually going to go for Tundra here because the blue elemental blast deals with Blood Sun, which allows me to fetch off this. Nice. All right, opponent. Balls in your court. At least this also turns off a ritual effect or a pedal into land sneak attack. There's the blood sun. All right. But they did use a spirit guide for it, which is pretty good. So if we draw a wasteland here, I'm probably just blue blasting this and then wastelanding them. Well, the deafening silence isn't great. Um, oof. I think we just have to play the, the Dried Arbor here and hold up the Blue Elemental Blast. Yeah. Definitely a tough spot. Blood Sun, uh, really annoying. It does a lot of really good work for this deck of just buying time. Um, that's a good question. I'm not too sure why they didn't use the mountain there for the Blood Sun. Ah, oh, they must have drawn the mountain off the Blood Sun. Yeah, they drew the mountain. There we go. We we both got there at the same time. <laughs> uh. Alright, so they drew the city. And this is definitely getting blasted. Um, because next turn I don't definitely have the mana online for Outland Liberator. Oh, nice. Thank you. 
This is fine. This to me shows a weak hand and they just want to make sure the Outland Liberator doesn't flip. So I'm more than happy to see that. Hmm. So this doesn't really do anything, but we do... Ooh, okay. Now it's quite a tough spot because if I play the Knight and tap out for it, we don't have the matter up to actually get rid of the Outland Liberator. What do I want to do here? I could also Prismatic Ending the Blood Sun and then hold up Misty with this. I just think getting the Knight online is probably my priority. It's a little bit risky, but I think this is the turn where I just have to play this and, and pass. And then hope we get another turn. Like, I, I don't want to trade the Outland Liberator for the Blood Sun. I want to take the risk of trying to get another turn here. Oh, okay, that's their one spell. Oof. Oh, but this is... It doesn't have haste, right? Okay, this is all good because we can still get Caracas. Or, or this. Haha. -ha. Wasteland would be dope. Come on now, come on. Is someone listening? Is someone listening to this? What is happening? Um, all right, so we trade the Liberator with the Blood Sun. We then Lagrita this. And then we double Wasteland them. I think that's the best play. Take this out. I'm calling Nintendo. Uh, I'm just going to fetch a forest here. Blue, white, Lagrell. Boom. And then, oh. Oh, so they could put it on top if they want. Interesting. They do. Uh, okay, we're gonna Wasteland one tomb. And I am gonna Wasteland the other. I could also get Caracas if I was really scared of something, but two cards. I'm pretty happy to take them off mana. And then just hope. But there is a, there is a world where the other... Like, I'm thinking of, like, through the breach, potentially. Just a pass. All right. Now we're looking the goods. Hey, Punishing Waterfalls, welcome. Hope you had a nice time at the pit. That is pretty nice. We can go library... Play another silence. No, because of the uh, silence and play, of course. Um, we can attack with the Lagria. I'm going to get rid of the Dried Arbor here. Uh, get the Last Wasteland. Hit City. All right, now we're in charge. You top eight of the Legacy Pit? Hell yeah. What did you play? And a big congratulations. That's uh, That's a huge achievement. Nice, man. Very, very cool. Fiend Elves and Elves? Nice. Oh, yes. Man, that wind feels good. Whew. Deck feeling pretty nice. Uh, Magpie putting up some work as well, which is nice. Uh, 
Um, have you had much experience with elves? And if so, what's your kind of vibe between uh, Hallow Newton's fiend artisan elves and then another version of elves without fiend artisan? Do you think it's a case of both being in the format or do you think it's a case of fiend artisan having currently like some big benefits over the other versions? And hey team, if you want to find this content, you can find me on Twitter and Twitch in the comments section. Thanks for hanging out. Have some pretty big, pretty sweet content coming up. Uh, I've got to book in some dates with Michael Mapson for a co-stream and also Mark Strassman for a co-stream. Uh, a little bit awkward with the Dried Arbor, but I'm okay with this. Uh, with this hand. It has a little bit of everything, which is nice. Yeah, Grist, Opposition, opposition Agent, and, and Shriekmora are great reasons to uh, to go for that. Verdant Pass. Interesting. No end step. Next turn, if I don't draw a land, I think I'm just going to go Dried Arbor Green Suns for Birds of Paradise. Forest. Misty. Is this like a slow elves? Double forest. Okay, slow elves. Nice. Okay. So the one thing about Elves and Swords of Plowshares is making sure your removal counts. Um, and by that I mean really making sure you're swordsing the right creature. Like uh, Visionary swordsing here. If I'd swords Visionary, Visionary here, it's because I think they have Cradle in hand. Um, I could swords it in response to a Wirewood so they can't return it. Um, so I think here I can just attack for one. The big question is, do I want a green suns for Birds of Paradise? Uh, so that next turn we can definitely cast Questing Beast and getting some, some real damage through. But then that's two more turns that I'm not casting swords. So I think here I actually just want to pass with potentially one swords open. And just get in for one. Because every little point matters. And I, I don't think I'd be going double swords. I think if they cast any sort of creature that would get them mana, Nettle is going to be fine. Heritage, I'm happy to now swords the visionary in response. I guess that's a good reason to hold up um, double swords in case they also have a third elf off this windswept heath. Like maybe the one damage wasn't worth it. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Um, we aren't running Scrib, we aren't running Gadok Teague in the main deck. Where are we quickly? Joe Depths, Joe Bant. Hmm. I kind of feel now I just want to Swords the Shepherd because it is a win condition, allow them just to have mana and then allow me to hopefully try to get to uh, a threat the following turn. I could just get another Noble as well. Yeah. And then probably here, take them off the Shepherd. 
and just say you can have all the mana, but you can't have the win con. But yeah, like this all comes back to not using the swords the turn that I could have. But they only have two cards in hand. Six. Seven. I feel like they have Hoof in hand and they're trying to figure out how to get through as much damage as possible this turn. But yeah, very, uh, very weird to see elves not have a turn one play. I guess they... Oh, is this actually lethal? Because they get to untap the nettles? Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, I think it is. Rough. Nine. Yeah, because he's all love trample. So even if I block with one noble, I still take lethal. Rough. Yeah. And it all comes back to that swords. Like to die with a swords in my hand is is pretty rough. Uh, but that's a hundred percent on me. Um, what do I like? I like Gaddock Teague. I like Path. That's really it. Collector Oof can easily come out. Uh, a Johnny like might just do more than other creatures, but like I think a Johnny is just better than Insurance. Outland Liberate is actually pretty bad. But that's not here, which is nice. Um, Safekeeper. Safekeeper is kind of nice because it keeps Gaddock Teague around. Blast Zone's obviously great. But yeah, it all comes back. It all comes back to that greedy attack for one, which is just uh, something I won't do again. <laughs> I think it's just going to be a Thalia. I think everything else kind of has its place. But yeah. Tough. At least the best thing you can do with mistakes is learn from them. Rough. Greed. Teague's probably the best bear against them. Just turning off their own green suns and natural order, which typically are. Uh, um, it's a lot better for me to turn off their green suns than the downside of turning off my own green suns. Uh, Ajani in this matchup doesn't do a whole lot. I think it's just better than some of the cards like Collector Ufanel and Liberator. Um, potentially like Thalia is just better and just having one in the deck. Um, but it's mainly it's just having like another element against some of the, the blue-white X control decks. There's just a, a four mana planeswalker. It does give you some a card advantage, which is nice. Um, does make some of your creatures bigger, which is kind of cool. Um, this is an interesting hand. I I don't mind it because it's a safekeeper into hold up double swords into Gadotig. Uh, I think double swords here is better.
I think just for mana reasons, I'm going to take them off this Visionary. Um, also, just keeping them off mana for Cradle is pretty huge. Hmm. Uh, now it's an interesting point. I think it's better to find my third land and play Thalia because Thalia puts us back so much. Blast Zone's actually quite nice. I think I will just take the zone and play it. And then next turn having Gadok Teague with Safekeeper backup is quite nice. And then Questing Beast is our way to kind of win the game. This is quite nice because they haven't used a Green Suns yet, and of course they haven't used a Natural Order, so... A lot of potential that they have at least one of those in hand. Hmm. But, you know, to be fair, Beatdown is also just a nice strategy from them. Because it, because Gadok Teague is obviously a card we don't want to block with. Same with Safekeeper. Hmm. Really wanted to land there. But we will just go with Thalia. Wywood is now a pretty big card as well. They could also just have Cradle into Hoof. But Wywood allows them to kind of attack with everything, then block where... Uh, Damage doesn't really stack up. Another leaf is really good as well. The tough thing about Once Upon a Time, I guess we could have and then played another, yeah, played Thalia. That's probably correct. Yeah, because holding up the Caracas isn't really that relevant anyway.
But yeah, definitely a tough one. Bant doesn't have great ways to deal with go wide. No plague engineers, no like punishing fire effects. So elves is definitely a, a tough matchup. But had the Teague, which is nice. Just didn't really line up with the the hand they had. The tough thing as well is, is that I use swords on creatures that aren't really that relevant. I really just use swords because of how I thought the game would progress and that I want to use my swords on my early turns and then on turn three, just Green Sun's Fatigue. But if anything, I'd love to have them now for these uh, Lord effects. And yeah, Wywood just closes it out. Because they can attack with everything, and then if anything doesn't line up well, they can just get there. Yeah. It's a little bit too slow. Alright, up against Larry on the draw. And hand's pretty cool. Uh, mana's great. We have, uh, yeah, pretty nice hand. Sylvan's really great at getting some extra cards. Thali's great at making sure we don't die early on. Same with Endurance. Against DNT, a little bit tough. But library should hopefully allow us to get there. All right. What sort of emboss would it be without DRC? Uh, I'm also happy just to go for a basic here. I could also try to go for Savannah Savannah, but I think getting this library down would be pretty sweet, especially early on. Okay. No attacks? Well, that's that's a <laughs> an interesting decision. Um here I'm pretty happy to go with Thalia first and then another noble just to keep that mana going. Like, to be able to play this Endurance around days is what my current target is. I'm gonna force this. Pitch a Merktide, okay. I mean, if they tap out next turn and they don't deal with our nobles, we could play Thalia first and then play Endurance without it being able to get countered, which is pretty huge. So, like, I assume we see a Ponder or Expressive Iteration here. Nice. Which will turn these uh, DRCs into 3 threes. Pretty aggressive. Like, Brazen Borrower is a pretty good card in this matchup, and they're just going to bin it. They've already got a creature in the yard as well, so it's not necessarily to turn the DRCs on. But the really nice thing about my hand next turn potentially is play Thalia while they're tapped out, play Endurance to keep these DRCs at bay, and then allow me to use this library to draw into removal down the line. Night. Okay. N right now, I'm happy just to play this this endurance. Like if they have force, they can still force through the Thalia. 
Oh, no force is huge. Hey, look at Boring. A huge thank you for the Prime sub. Savannah into Thalia. Nice, that's huge. No bolt upkeep on the Thalia either to get Dragon Rage triggers before you draw. It's pretty nice. If we draw a land, we also get to play Knight and Library through Thalia next turn. You're enjoying the Rainbow Depths content? Very nice to hear. Oh, Young Pyromancer. Didn't expect Young Pyro, but pretty good on this board because it can just go wide. But if they're tapping out here for a burn spell, then it's going to be pretty tough. I kind of hope it's Ponder. Red, red. Okay. Okay. I guess they put, could put Sorcery Creature into the bin, but they don't. They don't hit it. This isn't too bad either, because we get to go Knight Library next turn anyway. Probably Knight first. Ooh. Ho -ho. Well, that's interesting. I don't mind holding up Hull Breacher. The question is, do I want to respect days? Or do I want to play the library? They, they bottom to days. Maybe they feel like we're in a position where days isn't relevant. Is that the read here? They bottom the days because they thought we have enough mana for anything. Look, I'm... I'm pretty happy to play into days here. They could just be thinking about another endurance with this, uh, this noble action. Please. Alright, you can get your triggers first, that's fine. They kept. I'm just going to respond to this. Hey, Legacy Council, welcome. Hope you're well. Please. Please let this resolve. Ah! Oh, they're going to brainstorm. Okay. Interesting spot for sure. I think the best thing the library can just find off the top is a... Uh, like a prismatic ending or a source to plushes. Another endurance would actually be quite nice as well. Oh, the breach of sticks. Wow. Did they find a bolt or an unholy heat? Oh, 
I mean, if they find a bolt, they can't use the bolt on the endurance for the DRC. Wow. And now the DRCs have to attack? Delver's fine. Okay. We take three, we deal with the DRC. Okay. Feeling pretty good. Oof is pretty dead. Ooh, not the greatest. I don't mind the bird as just a blocker if needed. Um, I don't mind attacking with the noble here. I think attacking with the noble is fine. So I'm definitely not blocking with it unless I really had to, but I think we're in a position where I don't have to block with it. They also are brainstorm locked, which is quite nice, unless they shuffled on the ponder. Can they shuffle? Well, they found bolt. Okay. We do a blast zone in the deck as well, so there's a world where if they attack with everything, I actually leave. No, I have to block. No. Hmm. I could put a bird in front of one of the flyers and go to six. The bolt is. Uh, go to three. But then blast zone's pretty sweet. I do lose my two nobles, but get rid of a DRC and a Delver. I guess we'll see how they how they attack, because that really shows everything. Alright. <laughs> I like how they try to take it back. Alright, I think here. Um I like blocking here, and I actually like putting the bird in front. Because I think blast zones are a pretty good out in quotation marks. We have so much mana that I don't think it really matters anyway. I assume the bolt here finishes off the endurance. Yeah. All right. So we know about two cards on top. So I think in upkeep, we're going to shuffle. Um, the question is, what do I want? There's nothing great here. I guess Cradle because it just gives us a lot of mana. Canopy gives us a draw if we really need one. I don't think we're on the Wasteland line. Blast Zone does deal with the Delver, but it takes out these, which is pretty awkward. I don't mind just getting Canopy. Swords is great. Endurance or Green Suns? <sighs> okay. Um, we could even draw a card. No. They have zero cards. Okay. I think we put on top and we pay for this. Is that greedy? No. Because we can Swords the Young Pyro. And then we can just play Endurance to take them off the uh, Insect. Go to five... Uh, and then we do have some blocks, but the one ones could put us back into. Oh, we have this treasure token. One, two, three, four. Okay. Yeah, four mana and then treasure. Ah. Oh, I could also go for Uro. Uro is pretty interesting. And Uro gains us three life, which is pretty huge. Huh. Is that the play? Maybe Uro is better. 
Uru puts us up to eight. We're definitely green something for three. This is just a tough one. I think it is just endurance. Um, but it's tough because like endurance blocks three, Uro gains three, but endurance is just in play then. It takes them off anything here as well, like fetch into something. But like Uro takes us nearly out of bolt range. No, I think it just has to be endurance. I think it just has to be. And then upkeep, I'll take out the young pyro. And then just if they have bolt, they have bolt. And I think he would just use the noble in upkeep because the canopy would hit us for one anyway. No attacks is so big. Oh. Last zone. I think here we just want to have the dried arbor because it is a blocker. Um, and here I can actually start getting in with the Hull Breacher. Unless they block with all four. Mm. <clears throat> I'm probably just going to shuffle, end step, and draw off the top. Right, two cards for my opponent. All right. Uh, I'm just going to get Cradle here. It's pretty good. Pretty good. It's pretty good. <laughs> um, I think it is actually just holding onto Bolt for one more turn, just in case they try to like. Uh, they can't even. I guess they could double Bolt us, but we don't have another way of drawing. So I think we just put the Questing Beast on top. Played a little bit safe. if I really need to, like if they go bolt bolt, then we can sword our own creature.
probably pretty happy here to take out the insectile aberration, just at sorcery speed. Force? Okay. Uh, I know it's on top as well, so I do want to keep that. So I'm not going to use Knight here. The only land we can get rid of as well is the Dried Arbor. They're all pretty good cards. No opponent, come on now. That was my fun. Yeah, Uru next turn is quite nice. I assume they expect it. I, I could... Like, I actually don't think potentially it shows. Like, showing the Merktide changes any way how they would board. Because they're going to bring in Creature Hate. They're probably going to keep in Blasts for thing like, things like the, the Hull Breaches. Uh, th this is always an interesting one. So I, I like the Endurance, the two Carpets... Uh, the two elementals and the path. We can easily take out the oof. Uh, the libraries, I just don't think are that great because of how aggressive they can be, especially in the go wide strategy of um, Young Pyromancer. Um, the safekeeper, there isn't really something that I want to keep and land is just such a big resource in this matchup that I don't think we have that ability. Um, I kind of like all my three drops. I still like ramen up. I think questing beast is fine at getting through little things, but don't really want it. Um, I still like my turn one mana dorks as well, so I don't think I'll cut on them. Lagrella's kind of cool because if you exile a Merktide, the Merktide loses all its counters. Hmm. It's actually pretty tough. It could just be a Noble Hierarch in place for the two carpets. I don't mind that. Um, yeah, uh, it's tough though, because we have so many good three drops that I want to be able to get to four mana early on to not be able to, to play around days. I think Ice, Ice Fang's still fine, especially as a 1-1. One -one. It could just be a Knight, to be fair. I think Knight's good, but when they have a lot of flies, I'd rather Endurance, and I think two is fine. It's also nice to cut down on three drops. I think that last spot is, you could definitely try out a, a few little things, but I think the first thing I want to do is just make sure my mana is tight and then have like one or two removal spells on my opening hand. So like four mana, threat, two removal spells, perfect. I don't think it gets any better than that. But yeah, definitely cool to finish off with uh, with Delver. Um, so this hand is pretty good. Uh, it has mana. It has really good interaction. Yeah, pretty happy to keep this. It doesn't have a removal spell, but I guess Endurance is kind of the removal spell here. Delver. Okay. Um, 
I don't mind this once upon a time getting dazed because we have turn one high rock off this, so I'm happy to play this without playing a land. Like if this got dazed, I'd be pretty happy. I think another endurance here is just best. And then I'm happy to go for basics here. Just because of how this hand plays out. What does NGL stand for? I've seen that a few times and I have no idea what it stands for. Not gonna lie. Oh, nice. Okay, cool. Yeah, the list is pretty sweet. I think there's a few flex spots for sure. Um, Cause Joe had a pretty like stock kind of list, like four ice fangs or like four ofs. Um, that was pretty cool. And just as I played it, I definitely changed up a, a few little things. Like I think um, we want to play with Lagrira. Like, Safekeeper is definitely a bit of a, a flex. Like, maybe the Hull Breaches are better in the board. Um, like, I'm playing a pretty high number of Mana Dorks and lands, even with once, because I still just want to be able to hit my mana early on. But yeah, Lagrell is very cool. I think I will change up the uh, Outland Liberator to Knight of Autumn because of how it works with Lagrella. It's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, a few nice things for sure. Will they play a Wasteland after a Brainstorm? That's a big yikes. That's a huge win for us because we get to take them off their Volk and then play Thalia. And we know they're Brainstorm locked. Opponent being really nice. Very, very cool. But yeah, being locked with the uh, the Brainstorm is, is pretty tough. Um, you can you can kind of see where that game is going with, uh, with it, but hey, pretty, pretty cool. Um, let's go to deck tech. <laughs> no, no salt at all. Really, really nice. Um, all right, so... Here is the deck. Two, four, six. Up. Four, one. Yes. Which is pretty cool. Pretty nice. Um, yeah, so I thought the deck was pretty strong. Uh, the reasoning for a few cards. The safekeeper, as I was saying, I do want to have some sort of protection for some of my bears, like Hull Breacher or Gaddock Teague in Sword Splashes or, or Bolt matchups. Hey, Marge. Yeah, you're the uh, the Delver player. Obviously, this deck is pretty well equipped to beat Delver. Um, put in the Blue Blast as well for things like EI, DRC, and things like End the Festivities. Um, the Ice Fang's cool. We never really found a time where Ice Fang was that relevant, but... Um, it is just a nice two drop to have as a creature that can trips and can be a removal spell with the basics out, but obviously it, it takes a little while for these to come on board. Um, the amount of mana dorks was quite nice. I, I think our mana overall was quite good. Um, we stumbled a little bit against elves, but um, we also could have played it a little bit differently with that line where we had three mana. We could have once first for a land and played Thali with the remaining two. Um, but yeah, overall pretty sweet. Uh, I think like the Ajani's have a lot to, to prove. Um, this card's pretty cool. I don't think anyone really expected it to see legacy play when it was first shown. Um, but it has some pretty cool benefits being, uh, green. So you can pitch it to endurance. Uh, you can play it on turn two with a mana dork, or you can play it as a three drop, but it does need to be prismatic endings for four, which I think is pretty relevant. Uh, it is card advantage once you reveal a card and actually get it. Uh, I guess twice, because you have to replace it and then get another one. The distribute three plus one plus ones is actually pretty sweet. Uh, and can do some cool things like 
If a lands player tries to Punishing Fire you another the Reliquary and then Bajookabog you, you can kind of take that out of the equation by just having your plus one plus one counter on the Knight. Um, you can also get your creatures potentially out of Sweeper range or making it harder for something like an Umazawa's Jide to deal with it. Um, a lot of cool little things, but I haven't really been able to see it, which is tough. I kind of wanted to switch the, the deck like this so I could just see a Johnny a lot more and then just bring in Hull Breaches for the decks where you play Brainstorm, but it's it's really tough because Hull Breach is just so good against the decks in game one where you want it. Uh, but to be fair, like, you know, Pyroblast is being played main deck now, Swords of Plowshares, Bolt, all those effects are going to be main deck, so it's not like Hull Breacher really gets around that much by being in the main deck, other than just catching your opponent off guard. Um, which is pretty cool. But yeah, the mana was nice. Um, Blast Zone was in the board at the beginning of this sort of deck list. Um, but I, I don't mind it main deck as just another way to deal with Delvers and, and DRCs and obviously against decks like uh, Goblins or, or Elves, which you do see in... Um, in the leagues uh it's quite nice to have but could potentially see it as just a cyborg uh utility land um yeah like i think i think it's always great to have in collector oof main deck because that can just be an oops i win against some decks um the lagrella was actually quite good uh there's a lot of times where it was nice i think lagrella is probably this deck's best answer to germ tokens without really giving your opponent a card. Like, swordsing a germ token never feels good. Prismatic Ending isn't too bad, but to be able just to exile the germ token that they don't get back, or something like a construct token, I think is actually really good. Um, so to have this is quite nice. I think if I did, you know, going forward, I think I would play Knight of Autumn uh, instead of Outland Liberator, just because of the ability for it to get some value with Lagrura. Um, I could see, I could see both, but I also think that for the matchups where I want, uh, Artifact and Enchantment Hate, like Painter, Eight Cast, Lands, you really want Force of Vigor in games two and three, uh, especially for those starts with like Mox Diamond Library or Mox Diamond Saga or, uh, Saga into like Mox Opal, um, you, you really want to get rid of it. So I, I don't mind playing the, th the three forces in the sideboard. Um, potentially going down on the extra endurance. Like we already have three in the main deck. Potentially don't need any more graveyard hate. Um, and then like having Knight of Autumn is kind of cool. Because it is just another great card with Green Sun Zenith. But then we do have to side one card out. Um, so like it could be like second library. Like I actually wouldn't mind to play one library main, one library side. There's a lot of matchups these days that are quite aggressive where you just can't really make use of library, but knowing you have one in the main deck and can bring in a second one for the more grindy matchups is quite nice. Tear under is pretty sweet. I got hit by tear under the other day and actually got some because I, I wanted to test it out. Um, but for those of you who don't know what tear under is, it is a one and a green instant. You can exile target artifact or enchantment. And then you can kick it for one and a black. And if the spell was kicked, you can exile target non-land permanent, which is pretty sweet for four mana at instant speed. Uh, kind of like a Vindicate that can't hit lands. Um, well, I guess it, it can hit sagas, which is quite relevant, um, which is pretty cool. Hey, CMR, thanks for the follow. Hope you are well. A big thank you for watching and enjoying the stream. Um, I actually like this because... Uh, on October 15th, I've actually been invited to a tournament where we are playing uh, on Anzi's channel with Mason Clark, I believe his name is, a non-supplementary set legacy tournament, which I believe is called Heritage. Uh, and what I've been working on is something like this. Uh, so we're looking at non-supplementary set Maverick, um, which doesn't look too different um there's a few big cards that you miss out on and yeah this is the one where i've actually tried out Terran in the sideboard because of course force of vigor is not in this format um crows and grip was another card i could i could think of um even something like rex sage but i wanted something that was a little bit quicker um normally watch youtube happy to catch a stream very cool very very cool but heritage is pretty sweet um i do have a list of the cards and I'd love to hear anyone in chat who might have ideas about 
uh, something that I'm missing in this deck that could be really good. I think that um, Thoughtseize, Abrupt Decay, and like the Black Splash is pretty good. I was thinking Punishing Mav as well. Um, I'll see if I can find it. I believe in Discord I actually have it. But yeah, it's a pretty cool format. Um, obviously no supplementary sets, so uh, no Modern Horizons, so no uh, Prismatic Ending, no Force of Vigor, uh, no Grist, which is pretty big for Mav, uh, no Flusterstorm, no True Name, no... Uh, actually, Flusterstorm, yeah, it was, still, was printed in Modern Horizons as well. And Offense of the Foremost, that's pretty cool. Um, pretty nice as like a Green Sun's target to exile graveyards, at least creatures from graveyards. All right, Heritage, General. All right, so this is some of the cards that aren't there. So um, yeah, Prismatic Ending is obviously a huge one. DNT loses a lot in like Solitude, Recruiter, Timeless Dragon. Um, yeah, no Merc Tide, which is fantastic. But here's kind of how I ran down what each matchup or what each deck loses. Um, so you can see Mav loses quite a fair bit, if not the most from any deck, which is pretty funny. Um, but yeah, I still think it's probably a pretty sweet deck to play. Uh, I did play some pre innistrad Legacy maybe two years ago in the league and played Maverick, and it was pretty strong. Um, you can still play things like Aven Mind Sensor, which is pretty cool, instead of playing Opposition Agent. Um, yeah, it seems like it'll be a really cool league, because I think there'll be a few players in it. Um, all kind of, I guess, names within the legacy community, which is cool. Uh, but yeah, just really happy to be a part of it and to see how Mav goes. I don't think anyone else will play Maverick. So, um, it was either between, yeah, green, white Mav, which should show here. Um, which seems pretty cool. I had a green, white version as well with Stoneforge, which I think could, could really get there. Really nice to have Deafening Silence still for the, the combo decks. Um, and then my other thought was, uh, green, black Depths, which doesn't lose really anything which is quite nice um you still have a really nice mana base you obviously have the combo still um you can play bobs uh this is like a mox diamond build this is more on the build that david long used to play uh, and did really well with in the scg events um but yeah if anyone here or on youtube sees anything that they think is uh missing definitely let me know in the comments i'd love to know because uh yeah i'm sure i missed something here that that could be really good so That'd be pretty sweet. But hey, that is me. A huge thank you to you guys for coming in and watching. Uh, a huge thank you to Joe for the uh, donation deck list. Obviously, this is more like a trial run to see how the deck performs. But there's going to be some more coming, which is really nice. So I hope you guys enjoy that. Uh, it looks like Ramar just started streaming, which is nice. So I'm going to send you guys over there. Ramar did just play... Uh, yeah, sorry, HC Fox, that is Heritage. Uh, there is a uh, a website for it. I think it's called like MTG Legacy Heritage, but it is no supplemental set or no standard set legacy, which is kind of cool. But hey, thank you once again. Enjoy Ramad's stream, and I'll see you next time. Bye.